first recon underwent 817. Copy. Uh, wait, can you hear me? Got it coming. Welcome to Screen Recaps, and today we're going to be recapping the movie The Colony, also known as Tides. After a global disaster almost eradicates humanity on Earth, the planet's privileged class escapes to establish the Kepler 209 space colony. As time passes, the inhabitants of Kepler 209 possess advanced technology and spacefaring capabilities, but they confront infertility due to the intense radiation present. In response, the Ulysses Initiative is initiated to assess Earth's viability for sustaining human life and facilitating reproduction. Unfortunately, the inaugural mission is lost shortly after touchdown. Subsequently, the Ulysses Project dispatches a young astronaut named Blake, hailing from Kepler-209, on a mission back to Earth. Accompanying her are fellow astronauts, Tucker and Holden. Regrettably, their spacecraft crash lands in proximity to a tidal flat near a weather beacon designed to transmit telemetry data back to Kepler-209. Blake discovers the lifeless body of Holden, while Tucker is located inside the space capsule, nursing an injured leg. Consequently, Blake must venture alone to procure information about Earth. Employing a biometer, she tests the water and identifies indications of life. During her exploration, she encounters a creature resembling a jellyfish that unexpectedly stings her wrist before she can secure a sample for examination. Fortunately, she successfully sprays some medical mist onto her wrist and then places the specimen into her crimson bag. Subsequently, Tucker informs her about the deteriorating weather due to an impending storm. Gradually, Blake's visibility diminishes. Consequently, Tucker ascends from the shuttle and launches a flare into the air. As Blake retraces her steps to the shuttle, two enigmatic men suddenly advance toward the spacecraft and assail Tucker. After dashing through the mist, Blake discovers that Tucker and their space pod have been dragged to an unknown location. Utilizing the scope on her firearm, she observes a cluster of individuals in the distance hauling their space capsule. Soon after, she loses consciousness following an ambush by another group of people. Subsequent to the event, Blake and Tucker are hurled into a sizable pit that slowly fills with water. Noticing Tucker's worsening injuries, Blake makes an attempt to scale the pit's edge in search of medical provisions, but she eventually plummets. She informs Tucker about glimpsing a child just before a rope is unexpectedly lowered by the enigmatic individuals. After ascending, she encounters a faction of fertile humans armed with bows and arrows, colloquially referred to as the Muds. In an unfamiliar language, they communicate to Blake the imperative of aiding a man whose countenance was marred by Tucker's gunshot. Meanwhile, a woman native to the Mudlands exhibits fluency in English and escorts Blake to her shuttle, where the medical provisions are stored. She also gathers that the technology has been stripped from the shuttle. Following this, she mends the wounded man using the identical spray she had employed earlier. Concurrently, she manages to stash some medical supplies, which she retrieves later to aid Tucker. In her endeavor to assist the ailing Tucker, Blake informs him about spotting a substantial community and numerous infants. In response, he emphasizes the necessity of notifying the inhabitants of Kepler-209, yet their shuttle remains incapacitated. Blake formulates a strategy to locate the Ulysses shuttle, subsequently utilizing the biometer to send out a distress signal. However, Tucker opts for self-inflicted death, ingesting a lethal pill concealed within his military identification necklace. Through a retrospective sequence, a young Blake engages in conversation with her father, also an astronaut. He presents her with a matchbox adorned with images of three renowned astronauts on the cover, identical to his own. He instructs her to ignite one at a specific moment, committing to do the same. His assurance is that before the last match dims, they will reunite once more. He also instructed her that their actions were intended for the greater good, a statement that Blake reiterates as the flashback fades, and now she possesses only one matchstick remaining. Not far after, the tides finally advance and start to fill the cavity. Consequently, she's hoisted out of the pit and secured onto a boat with her wrists bound behind her. The boat sets sail during the night while Blake observes a sea burial for Tucker. In an alternate flashback, Blake's father informed her that humanity had exploited Earth's riches. He also presented her with a sapling that wouldn't thrive on their space settlement. The flashback concludes with her father departing Kepler, 209 on the Ulysses Lund mission, as those left behind echoed the phrase for the sake of the many.
As the water starts to recede the following morning, Blake is hurled back into the pit where she befriends a girl named Mila. The two endeavor to comprehend each other's speech, and Blake requests her aid in obtaining the biometer. Shortly after, a man lowers several girls and an infant into the pit amidst a disturbance outside. Blake then ascends only to witness the muds being overrun by a hostile group that abducts all of them. She also witnesses Mila's frantic screams while clutching Blake's crimson bag just before a man tosses her onto a boat. Once the situation settles, the English-speaking woman comes to their rescue. It's unveiled that she's Mila's mother and her name is Narvok. Armed with a flare gun, she dashes off to save her daughter. Simultaneously, Blake trails behind, determined to assist in Mila's rescue, even though Narvok remains skeptical of her intentions. Mila's distant screams prompt them to discover that the captives are being transported onto a boat. Blake urges Narvok to fire the flare gun into the sky, but her pleas go unheeded. In response, Blake subdues her, then fires the flare herself. With the aggressors momentarily distracted, she swiftly swims to the boat and eventually locates her red bag. As the men reboard their vessel, Blake conceals herself within alongside Malaya and the other captives. Before long, they're disembarked and directed toward a cargo ship that withstands the frequent floods and storms by rising above them. On the cargo ship, they encounter a man named Paling, who orders the separation of Milo and assigns several men to tasks. Upon retrieving her gun from the red bag, he guides Blake to an encounter with his superior, Gibson, who happens to be a survivor of the Ulysses Loan mission led by Blake's father. Gibson proceeds to recount his group's initial interactions with the Muds, praising Blake's father for his adeptness in handling them. Yet a sudden rebellion occurred, leading to the destruction of the Ulysses' worst capsule and its communication equipment, culminating in Blake's father's assassination. The conversation transitions to the aspiration of relocating people from Kepler-209 to Earth. Blake's father had envisioned constructing a colossal dam to harness the ocean for power. The following day, Blake becomes aware of her fertility, suggesting the possibility of reproduction in this environment. She then enters a classroom brimming with the mud's offspring, whom Gibson is educating. Amid sharing tales of Kepler with the children, Mila is also ushered into the class. Subsequently, Blake encounters Neil, Gibson's adopted son, who receives individual instruction. He eventually discloses a clandestine discovery, a small tree flourishing in a jar. Piqued by curiosity, Blake inquires how Neil came to know about the tree, and he responds that a man residing in a cabin near the engine room informed him. Having acquired a map, Blake swiftly heads toward the cabin, discovering within that her father has been confined there all along, and Gibson's deception becomes evident. In that moment, Gibson appears unexpectedly and unveils a different narrative. Blake's father, in reality, led the uprising due to his allegiance with the Muds and his affection for a Mud woman. After a 15-year separation, Blake and her father are at last reunited. He asserts that the inhabitants of Kepler must not return to Earth, and he feels compelled to rectify the mistakes. During high tide, Blake identifies the weather station as the point for linking the biometer and establishing contact with Kepler. She also confides in Gibson about her fertility, which could serve as evidence to communicate to Kepler. During a dinner gathering, Moon Eye, Neil's mother, recounts how Gibson rescued them and welcomed them into his family. Moments later, the power abruptly falters, prompting Paling to inform Gibson of an intruder who incapacitated the guards and disrupted the power supply. Consequently, Gibson orders everyone to retreat to their rooms and embarks armed. Navigating the corridors, the intruder brandishes a knife against Blake's throat. In an unforeseen twist, the intruder is revealed to be Narvok on a quest to locate her daughter. Subsequently, they proceed together to visit Mila, but their encounter is abruptly disrupted by an assault from the guards. Paling enters the room, instructing the guards to remove Narvok. Just before her departure, Narvok discreetly informs Blake that it's only the girls who are taken. Later, Munai tends to Blake's wound, hinting that she possesses his eyes, just as Gibson enters the room. He then reveals that Narvok was among the guards who betrayed him. In the course of their conversation, Blake finally unravels the truth. The girls are being held captive for Gibson's forthcoming breeding plans. Shortly thereafter, Paling presents Blake's red bag to Gibson, yet the biometer remains elusive within it. Back in her room, Blake discovers Mila concealed in her closet. However, Paling suddenly knocks on her door and forces entry. Evidently, his intentions are malicious, but fortune favors Blake, 
as she manages to dispatch him using a poison pill concealed in her army tag necklace. Seizing the moment, Blake discreetly takes on the guards, freeing all the captives, including Narvok, to whom she offers a firearm. In addition, she locates her father, who gazes out the window while Gibson and Neil make their way to the weather station. Gradually, they uncover that Gibson possesses the biometer alongside Neil, intended as evidence due to his Kepler origin. Concurrently, the MUDs flee to the boat, evading the gunfire of the guards. In a contrasting pursuit, Blake trails Gibson and Neil, determined to prevent the transmission of news to Kepler-209. Gibson tests Neil's compatibility with the biometer, revealing a surprising connection. Neil is Blake's younger brother. However, tension escalates as he swiftly threatens Blake, gun aimed at Neil, and callously executes Moon Eye with a gunshot to the head. Swiftly transmitting data to Kepler via the biometer, Gibson is abruptly tackled into the water by Blake. In a tense struggle, she strangles and drowns Gibson, almost succumbing to the water herself. Fortunately, Norvik comes to her rescue, managing to resuscitate her. Subsequently, Blake and her father rejoin the Muds, embarking on a tugboat. Blake approaches Neil, who mourns his mother's demise at the boat's bow. She offers him her matchbox as a memento, a gift from her father. The film concludes with a closing scene that depicts a settlement on the tide flats and a group of joyous children engrossed in play.